And also we have um, a perspectives on equality that are changing. It's no longer just about something for the few, looking at the rights of minorities, talking about how that issue might be dealt with. It's about the kind of society we are, that we want to be, and how we all participate in that on an equal um, basis and to what extent we respect um, diversity and difference. And we have a legislative framework now through the Equality Bill and through the public duties, which is creating an environment to make this easier for us to change. So gender equality, um, and, oh gosh, this is, I've been pressing the button and it hasn't been going, I do apologise. Um, I'm not going to go through this because Martin's going to say a little bit about it and you'll be all familiar in this room with the, uh, the duty. This year, you're going to be asked to produce your schemes if you haven't done a single equality scheme, an annual report and uh, your equal pay statements. An opportunity here to, for us to crystallise in all of that reporting what the issues are and how we intend to make the change. Perhaps to sell, somebody was talking in a, pro, in a discussion group earlier, but how where are the public about what we do? How much are we telling them about the issues that are there and what we're doing in order to be able to change it? And for Scottish ministers, we have said that over this next period, violence against women or gender-based violence within that, specifically focusing on violence against women because the evidence points us in that direction, and occupational segregation are the things that will help us at this point in time perhaps to make progress. And we'll be reporting in 2010 about that. So, Public duties can really make a difference. Um, it allows us to be better at what we do, to deliver our, to do our jobs better, to deliver better services, to be able to utilize the talent of our workforce and to make a real difference in outcomes. That's why when we think about legislation, I know people in this room are here because you believe that, but we have a job to say it to all our whole organization. But it, this is not, an in, uh, uh, a requirement that should be seen as a burden and something which cannot add value to the organization or our activity. Actually, it is about really doing the opposite. It's about something that is really a very, very powerful lever. I don't intend to go through all of these because time constraints are there, but I think what we would say when we looked at what was it about these duties that could really make a difference for the organization, it was these things. It allows if we can get leadership, if we can get effective um, data and information, if we can use that data, now in the health service the data on gender is very good, we collect a lot, how are we using it? Are we exploiting it to the full? Are we taking that information and making it work for us in our, in our organizations uh, across the piece? Are we consulting the way that we should with communities? Huge program on community health partnerships, working with that agenda, trying to open it up. How do we use that information? Are we helping to use it to, is it, does it help us to change what we do? Um, making a focus, as I said, on outcomes, um, linking our objectives to the business planning, seeing the fact that what we do on equality is not something distinct and separate from what we should be doing as an organization and making change. Now, you will all say that's easy said. I agree, it's easy okay. said. It isn't always easily done. And the task for us is to think about how we use the levers that the duty provides to get better at doing that. And the opportunity in 2010, because this will be the last year or last year where we'll be talking about schemes for gender or reports for gender because we'll have an equality duty with a single uh, purpose and we need to think differently. We need to, we've got an opportunity here to highlight some of this stuff so that we can, um, if you like, do these things, which is improve our outcomes, our decision making, uh, use the talent in our workforce better, be better service providers, and more importantly, and as importantly, become a better organization. Just a couple of um, concluding points. First of all, we need to get better at describing the narrative that says what we do on gender equality in the health service runs absolutely in parallel with all the other drivers that are making are about change. Nicola Sturgeon this morning when she gave her, gave her video introduction talked about that commitment which government has and it fits with our patient-centered uh, approach to the health service, about patient rights, about the quality strategy, about recognizing the diversity and why we need to be better in terms of equally well our, our program, our social policy program for improving the health service. And it's also helping us to think differently about the way we do things. Um, on the domestic abuse side, we're working um, to look at routine inquiry as a mechanism for helping us understand the extent of domestic abuse amongst those that present um, to uh, different facets of the health service. It's an opportunity created to combine our issues on gender equality and our issues around the health service. 
The quality bill's coming. Martin's going to talk a little about that. So just to flag with you that it is a significant major change in the legislative framework. We need to harness it, make it work for us. And, but it will mean, and I should flag this, it will mean we're going to have to think differently about how we do our business. If you have one single duty and not a specific duty, what does that mean for us? We're consulting at the moment about how we might um, incorporate some of the positive elements on gender equality into the specific duties that we might apply to public authorities, including health boards. That discussion is still ongoing. We've just concluded the consultation. We're looking at things like pay reporting. We're looking at um, you know, how we deal with the issues around gender um, and not lose the advance, uh, but we've some way to go yet before we have a final decision. So, final thoughts. It's a lever for change. Um, and I think two points I would want to make on this. When we work for the advancement of gender equality, I would like us to see perhaps we need to just be better at getting um, the idea that this is about improving the life chances for people. It's about improving our outcomes and that we do it not because it's a legal requirement but because it's right. And we don't just change the way our organizations do things because we might be held to account, although it's a hell of a great stick to, to enable us to do it. It's because it genuinely can make a difference. I know some of you did, a, I've, Martin was just telling me, some of you did an assessment about whether you thought the duties had been helpful or not, and there was quite a lot of uh, view in the room that perhaps not a lot has changed. Um, I think that is probably an, a, an indication of where we are. It isn't an indication of where we could be, mm. and the potential for change is huge. If we adopt this lever and see it for what it is, a tool to be proactive in our engagement on equality, unlike any other piece of legislation we have which demands compliance, the public duties allow us to do something proactively. So we have an opportunity here. And I think finally, and this is really to capture something you said, Penny, to me in the break, the NHS is the major, is the biggest employer in Scotland. How wonderful if we could get it right throughout the NHS in terms of what we do, how much we could influence and change the character of what we're able to do across Scotland. So maybe the challenge for us all, and I'm not a health professional, so maybe it's easier for me to say this, that we have a real opportunity to perhaps be both exemplar, as many of you are in the fields that you're working in, and we know there's a lot happening in the health service to be hugely proud of, but there's a real opportunity here to do something even more, um, despite the, the constraints that we may find ourselves with, economically and others. I think finally, Penny, somebody once said that sometimes when the chips are down, we all get much yeah. smarter and more innovative. I don't like to think that we have to, that the only way we ever make change is by pain, but sometimes if we're forced to, perhaps this is an opportunity for us to exploit, not just to, um, to give in to, if you like. So with that, I hope we can have a good conversation later. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Von Strachan. <laughs>